How's it going, everyone? I've been saying it over and over again, but man, 2024 for JRPG fans, it has been a hell of a year. Persona 3 Reload, Grand Blue Fantasy Reeling, throw Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth in there, you have the release of Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, and while I don't think the rest of the year is going to encompass the insane stacked lineup of the first two months of the year. Still a lot of big games to come, and one of them that I am very excited for that I've been covering on this channel for years now is a Yuden Chronicle 100 Heroes. We had a Yuden Chronicle Rising that came out a while ago, but finally the main game, 100 Heroes, is out on April the 23rd. The game will be released at $49.99 for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC through Steam, Epic Game Store, and GOG. That'll be coming April the 23rd. It will also be available via Xbox Game Pass. So if you subscribe to that, you can play the game that way. Want to give you guys a heads up of everything to know about the game before you spend your $50. And there is a deluxe edition, and you know how I keep it on this channel. Even if it's a game that I am super excited for, when I see some stuff that I don't necessarily agree with, I gotta call it out, and I'm sorry, Aiden Chronicle, I'm sure you're gonna be a great game. The deluxe edition, not really my cup of tea, but we'll get to that later, because the game itself, let's give you guys an overview of everything to expect. Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes is designed to bring players a modern take on a classic JRPG experience. One of the big focal points of this game and one of the big elements that draws people in is the fact that, yes, you have three main characters at the heart of this story. However, you will have a plethora of allies and alliances to be made with side characters that are going to have an integral impact in the story as well. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, five side characters. I'm not talking about ten side characters. Try a massive army with over a hundred playable characters, and all of these characters, based on what we've seen thus far, have depth in terms of their gameplay design as well as their character design. We'll see how their overarching narratives unweave throughout the entirety of the game. Obviously, when you have that many playable characters, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to give all of them the time and care that each of them deserve, but we'll see how it turns out. Obviously, this is akin to Sweet in from back in the day. A very iconic JRPG franchise that has been MIA for a little bit, although it's getting a re-release later this year. At least, fingers crossed, that comes out later this year. But Ayuden Chronicle trying to do something similar in the sense of having this vast army of characters at your repertoire. Now, yes, while there is over 100 characters, there are three heroes at the heart of the story. You have Noah, a brash guard, Sane, an imperial officer, and Marissa, who's known to be a destined guardian. Your story begins in one corner of Alron, a tapestry of nations with diverse cultures and values. By dint of sword and by way of magical objects known as rune lenses, the land's history has been shaped by the alliances and aggressions of humans, beastmen, elves, and desert people who live there. And yes, there's going to be a lot of depth to the characters that you see. One trailer showcased the talking shark, which I'm all on board on that. We, we got talking sharks, that's a thumbs up to me. The Galdian Empire has edged out other nations and discovered a technology that amplifies the rune lens's magic. Now, the Empire is scouring the continent for an artifact that will expand their power even further. It is on one such expedition that Sane Kessling, a young and gifted Imperial officer, and Noah, a boy from a remote village, meet each other and become friends. However, a twist of fate will soon drag them into the fires of war and force them both to re-examine everything they believe to be right and true. A lot of mystery... A lot of twists and turns attached to the game as well, all displayed in a great throwback art style. You've got nostalgic pixel art characters set against vibrant 3D landscapes in a world amidst in chaos. And again, the heart of the story takes place in this continent of Alron, a storied continent of many varying nations. The Galdian Empire, on the other hand, they want to cause some nonsense. Their quest stretches across vast lands, and Noah and his squad, it's their task to take them down, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of twists and turns along the way, but also, we got to talk about the gameplay. While there is going to be a narrative emphasis on the game, gameplay is going to be a big element as well. Countless ways to fight, obviously, with a vast roster of characters. Uh, heroes are going to have a myriad of unique abilities, and, and Throughout the game, you'll build strong ties that allow for hero combos. Each bond strengthens the party, and you'll also be able to harness the various environments that the game is going to offer to your advantage for victory against various enemies. 
And then there is also a war mode component to the game. Wars are at the heart of the game and you'll oversee the battlefield and command with strategy and foresight. Your legion strength grows with every new member and each hero's faith and resolve changes within the battles and unique conversations will also occur through the war mode. The war mode offers more of a strategic sense while you have the traditional JRPG style of gameplay. The war mode is more of a tactics based component based on what we've seen thus far. And through all of it, after you go through battle, you want to take it easy, get some r, r there will also be the Alliance Headquarters. Heroes convene to take respite. Each new hero revitalizes the town and the Alliance Headquarters with added fields and facilities. A various amount of mini games will be at your disposal as well. We've seen a card game, fishing, and much more. You can also utilize the Headquarters to prepare for battle. It's looking to be a meticulously crafted turn-based JRPG and visually it looks gorgeous with that throw D visual style. 2D sprites and 3D backgrounds and you'll create your ideal six character party and choose from over 100 unique heroes in total to join you through the war-torn continent of Alron. Manage your town and recruit companions to gather resources, expand production, and develop new facilities to aid in your campaign. Confront foes in strategic one-on-one -on -one duels and intense war battles that will shape your story. The combination of these battles along with the war component is going to be an interesting way to navigate the various gameplay components. Now, Let's talk about the various editions because this is something we certainly have to talk about and as excited as I am for a Uden Chronicle, I'd like to keep it 100 with you guys. You might think that I'm being a little bit too negative. You might think that I'm always down on games. Why can't I just be happy about things? Look, I'm incredibly happy and excited for you and Chronicle 100 Heroes. I think it's going to be a great JRPG, but again, we keep it 100. The base game will be $49.99. Said base game will also be available on Xbox Game Pass on all platforms. On top of that... If you do pre-order the base game, there will be a early bird pack, one enchantment rune, and one enchantment accessory, and one headquarters custom object. That is the early bird pack and the headquarters custom object. They will be sold separately at a later date. Now, while the game will be $50 on all major platforms, if you guys want to play this game on PC and Steam, go check out GreenManGaming.com. They are partnered with this channel. You will save 20% on the game and you will get a Steam key for the title. Instead of paying $50, you will pay $40. You'll get the game a little bit cheaper. It'll redeem directly on Steam. You'll be good to go and you can play the game when it is out. So get it a little bit cheaper. Why not? That is if you're playing it on Steam and PC. Then we have the Digital Deluxe Edition. A whopping $80 for the set Digital Deluxe Edition. So let's go over everything that'll come with it. A Uden Chronicle 100 Heroes the full game, one easy journey pack, that's six healing items, two revive items, and three excavation items, one headquarters custom object, the season pass, three wallpapers, two headquarters pains DLC, and the Saints chapter DLC, the Marissa's chapter DLC, and the Marcus's chapter DLC, all three of those DLCs included in the season pass, digital mini art book, and digital soundtrack. Look, you can have your opinion in a variety of different ways on whether or not DLC that gives background on specific characters that are in the main game, Saints chapter, Marissa's chapter, Marcus's chapter, whether or not that should be DLC, I'm not here to debate you on that. What I will immediately scoff at is the 48 hours of early access that you get by buying the digital deluxe edition. Come on now. This is a JRPG, single player game. You guys know I hate this early access gimmick and it's an $80 deluxe edition for a game that... You know what, I don't think that $50 price tag is that egregious, and I understand why they're doing this early access gimmick, because it's in Game Pass, you want uh, people to be incentivized to spend money on it still with it being on Game Pass, so people are gonna drop $80, but $80 is kinda crazy, guys. Like, let's be real here, with this early access gimmick baked into it, like, it would've been whatever if they did this deluxe edition and the early access gimmick wasn't attached to it. I think people should still be a little bit like, okay, what's up with that? Immediately telling us that there's going to be DLC and we got to pay more. On top of all of that, it would have been what it is, but this was a game that was crowdfunded. This was crowdfunded back in 2020 where they smashed every single one of their stretch goals. So even with it being crowdfunded, ultimately, we're still having these elements of trying to push you to get the deluxe edition. Above all, this is a game that's being published by 505 Games. It's more of a 505 Games decision. I would imagine that these gimmicks are being introduced, the Early Access gimmick, the Deluxe Edition being $80 and all of that. 
505 Games has published some other titles. They did the same thing with Ghost Runner 2, where that game uh, had the early access gimmick baked into it as well. Had DLC uh, released in the Deluxe Edition, and the Deluxe Edition was like $70, and I think the base game was $40 or $50. But you get the idea. I'm just not a big fan of it, and I get it. Rabbit and Bear Studios, probably not at hand with employing the early access gimmick. It's obviously inc an incredibly effective gimmick, but the more we don't talk about it, the more they're going to get away with it. And I'm just one channel. Ultimately, they're all going to get away with it, and me rambling about it for this entire time is going to accomplish nothing. I get that. It'll be a great JRPG, but it's just a little bit of an annoyance that this is happening on the fact that it was an entirely crowdfunded game. And yes, you could say that the publisher decided to do the gimmicks and whatnot, but it's still a little bit of a bummer, but what can you do? Uh, th that's just my opinion, and a lot of you guys are gonna be like, you're being way too negative, this and that and that, but if this was a Ubisoft game, man, you guys would be like, yeah, screw Ubisoft, but I get it. Smaller scale JRPG, JRPG fans, myself included, I'm the biggest JRPG fan that there is. Some of you, based on how much I am uh, talking about JRPGs, are like, yo, stop being a weeb talk about some other games, but JRPGs are always going to be one of my favorite genres, but I digress. It is what it is. I just wanted to get that across after we talked about all of the information of the game, since I think it should be stuff that people are abundantly aware about. And yes, most of you guys are going to let it slide. You're not going to care. You're incredibly excited about the game, as am I, but I feel like it still should be mentioned. But nevertheless, the game will be $50 on release day, April 23rd. If you want to play it early, Deluxe Edition, April the 21st, it will be available on Xbox Game Pass as well, so you can play it that way. And also, guys, if you are looking to play the game on Steam, don't be spending $50 on it. Do spend $40. Green Man Gaming, link in the description box below. Check them out, and you'll get the game a little bit cheaper. But with all that being said, that'll do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always, thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.